Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. Serious, what was your biggest we need to leave? Now, moment. Attention. Serious, tag notice. Jokes, puns, and off topic comments are not permitted in any comment, parent or child. Parent comments that aren't from the target group will be removed, along with their child replies. Report comments that violate these rules. Posts that have few relevant answers within the first hour, and posts that are not appropriate for the serious tag will be removed. Consider doing a NOMA request instead. Thanks for your cooperation and enjoy the discussion. I am a bot, and this action was performed automatically. Please contact the moderators of this subreddit if you have any questions or concerns. When I was about 16, I went to visit my grandmother at her place. The smell of natural gas was intense, even though Nana didn't seem to notice it much. She was groggy sort of half asleep not her usual responsive self. So I made her get out of the house at once and opened the windows and doors. I called dad and he reported it to the gas company, who sent inspectors right away. They shut off the gas, valve in the street, immediately and sent a repair crew to fix a leaking joint in the gas supply pipe. The inspector said that if I hadn't acted then and there, the probability was great that there would soon have been an explosion. Fantastic job. And thankfully you all got out fine. Just some advice, please check with your gas company or your local fire station on what their suggested actions are if you suspect a gas leak. I'm only sharing my old fire company's advice and your local station may have differing advice. We advised to not open doors or windows. To immediately vacate the building and call emergency services once safely outside. The reasoning for this is gases have an upper and lower explosive limit in which they may combust. Meaning if the air to gas ratio falls above or below those limits, they will not combust. Opening the windows and doors may introduce oxygen needed to fall inside those limits. Plus spending extra time running around opening windows and doors keeps you in a very dangerous situation for much longer than you need to be. Without a meter, you do not know what the gas to air ratio is and if some automated electrical system like the compressor on the fridge or a light switch will provide the spark to detonate the mixture. Again this was only my department's SOP but we preferred everyone to vacate immediately and let us make entry. In fact the circumstances are so volatile and unknown during those calls, our procedure was to kit fully up with our breathing systems on outside. Stand outside the closed front door, and take a reading. Depeg on the reading, we'd open the door and take another reading, depending on that reading then we'd make entry, depending on the reading leave the door open or closed behind us. Take another reading in the first room and then determine if conditions favored a room by room search for the leak, or if they were too dangerous we'd evacuate and attempt to vent the house from the outside. Again though, thank goodness you recognized the situation and saved your grandmother. I've wrote about this before I was in Amal in Indonesia and two tourists seemed to be having problems communicating with the cashier at a bookstore, so I helped translate. The wanted to buy me drinks to thank me. Told them it's not necessary and I have to get back to my mom soon. They told me to meet them for dinner. Told them I have to have dinner at home. They told me to sneak out and meet them after dinner. At this point, a bookstore staff noticed something was wrong and went up to question them. My sister and I dashed off while they were distracted. Continued wandering around the mall and realized they were following us. To see if we were just paranoid, we ducked into a lingerie store since we figured two men won't usually need to go lingerie shopping together. They followed us in. Ran so quickly back to the jewelry store our mom was at. The store had intimidating security guards and I guess that stopped those guys. I was 11, my sister was 10. Yep. That's pretty terrifying. The wanted to buy me drinks to thank me. Told them it's not necessary and I have to get back to my mom soon. They told me to meet them for dinner. Told them I have to have dinner at home. They told me to sneak out and meet them after dinner. That was already such a big red flag. The moment a stranger is acting too cool that too with a child, you run. Unfortunately, so many children worldwide fall victim to these kind of crap. And I cannot even imagine what they do to them forward slash what the child has to go through. One in four victims of trafficking are children. This alone explains a lot. You can read more here. Also, consider to help kids when possible. Keep you children safe you all. Edit, formatting. Who the fuck offers to buy children drinks? Removed. 
probably two months after my wedding, I invited my then best friend, maid of honor, to a party my husband and I were going to. She agreed. Some time into it, I'm drunk and in the pool and my husband swims out to me to tell me she just asked him to sleep with her. I have never sobered up or left somewhere so fast. Oh damn, that sucks. Good on your husband for telling you, though, and you for trusting him. Too often this kind of thing doesn't get dealt with because people don't want to cause a fuss, or the other person just thinks they are trying to start shit. My husband is a good man and an honest person. He knew this was an absolute no-no for her and it was up to her to make amends forward slash apologize. Which she never did. Showed up to a party, some people were outside fighting, my GF at the time and I decided to leave. Not long after that some guys that were a part of the first fight came back with more and a shooting occurred. Were we at the same party? At mine I had left to go rest in my car across the street from the house when two rival gang members started brawling on the eye near my car I texted my friends we gotta go couple seconds after heading down the street we heard gunshots. No, these ones weren't gang related that I recall. Just hot headed groups and alcohol. I really hate to say this but as some who likes listening to police scanners. This happens more often than you would think. Woodstock 99. Felt the energy of the grossly overpacked crowd, the building rage, and looked my friends and said we need to go. They stayed, I left. Shortly after fired and riots started and my friends lost everything they had with them. Tents, clothes, food, everything. When you have 300 Kelvin people shoulder to shoulder in 104 degrees humidity and charge $4 for a bottle if water and have half as many bathrooms as needed, you're gonna have a bad time. WS99 survivor here 2 per second. Went with my GF, now wife, and another couple. We really wanted to see IHCP, but didn't care for any of the other bands on the last, half, day of the show. We left that morning and got stuck in 8 hours of traffic. We intended to make it all the way home that day, six hour drive, but with the traffic we were exhausted and found a motel room in NY at dusk. Turned the news on to see the riot, fires, and 24 hour plus traffic jam. That concert organizer should have gone to jail. We were underage, and beer was cheaper than water, which we had no problem buying. We left because we were broke just from trying to survive the water and restroom situation alone was criminal. Remember the blue mud people. In the original Woodstock, it rained and people played in the mud. At WS99, they knocked over the porto potties at the top of the hill and people started flinging blue-tinged sod in the air. Everyone leaving Dave Matthews Band looked like a smurf but smelled like Gargamel. Good times. WS99 fellow veteran. If you were there when the frisbee cases were broke open, that was pretty memorable as well. Not sure if they were free or supposed to be purchased but many many people were whipping frisbees straight into the air. Imagine several hundred just raining down around you. Too many to keep track of. That sounds somewhat dangerous, but as the frisbees hit the pavement they would crack, imagine that. Then they'd get whipped in the air again. Now you're dodging frisbees raining down with sharp edges. Looked like a smurf but smelled like gargamel. This is just fantastic. I was there. I'm wondering where you found water as cheap as $4 a bottle. I remember seeing them raise the price of water as the heat went up. Started at $4 forward slash bottle, which was an outrageous sum at the time, and went up as high as $6. Met this cute girl at a party. Spent the whole night dancing a flirting. Offered to drive her home and she agreed. We were making out in the car in front of her house when another car pulls up with their headlights beaming at us. I ask if that's a neighbor and if we're blocking their driveway. She replies no, that's my husband. Husband's car door opens and I noped the fuck out of there. Dropped her straight back at the party and never saw her again. Her excuse was that they were separated and he shouldn't have a problem with it. I sure wasn't sticking around to find out. Edit, holy shit that's a lot of upvotties. I thoroughly enjoyed hearing everyone's similar stories. Thank you all. You and I have a similar story with very different endings. She went to a party to find someone to kick her ex-BF's ass. Asterisk edit I didn't know about this part until after. I just went home with her to smash. I pulled into her driveway and a car blocked me in, and four guys pulled up on me. I had no idea what was going on, and before I could get two words out one of them smashed a 40-ounce bottle over my head. Somehow I managed to stay on my feet and put up enough of a fight they ran off. 
likely had a lot to do with all the blood. My socks were soaking wet. Props for fighting off four dudes after a surprise attack. So she wanted you to kick her ex's ads but didn't tell you that. Did you go to the police? Removed. 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 So I was waiting at the train station to pick up a friend of mine. I was early so I decided to stand in the sun right outside of the station. A guy with a bicycle walked up to me asking in broken English if I knew how late the train would arrive. After I answered the question he stayed around and starting talking to me. Now I know that's not weird at all but the things he asked and the way he acted and looked just gave me a creepy vibe. Eventually he asked if I would walk with him while he dropped his bicycle off. I didn't want to because the place to store bicycles at this station is very secluded and to be honest I didn't want to be alone with this guy. So I noped out and walked into the station. He started yelling at me. Calling me names but at that moment the train came in and it got very busy. So he left. A few months later I read this article in the local paper about a girl being raped at the station. They had put a drawing of a guy next to the article as he was not yet caught. It was the same guy. To this day I'm very happy I didn't go with him. Edit, changed my special way of spelling bicycle to the correct way. I was walking along the sidewalk one day and a guy with a windowless van pulled up beside me and said he would give me a bottle of water if I got in his van. It was summer and rather hot. Nope level 1. I declined and continued walking, and the guy started shouting and screaming and beating his steering wheel, yelling over and over again it's free it's free how can you say no to something free? Do up level 2. I got to where I was going, which was only a few blocks farther, and was a gas station, and had a lovely drink there while talking to the cashier who was a friend and reported having the exact same situation happen to her. Ooh, up level 3. By chance I was still there, well, back there, late that evening when the shifts changed and the incoming cashier reported strange windowless van idling in the back corner of the lot, out of the light. Nope level call the police reached. But as it happened, a rather sizable dude was in the area, overheard us swapping stories, and announced he was gonna go take care of it. It quot happened but none of the three of us ever saw the van, the driver, or the big guy ever again. I hope you actually did call the police. Him being scared off is just making sure you're protected. Letting the police know, and getting the reg number, might be protecting others in future. That's literally me when any stranger talks to me Iktfo. I've been traveling alone in Europe and it's ridiculous how often men approach me. I'm 100% sure they see me as an easy target, a woman alone and a tourist. I've gotten to the point that as soon as they get I saw you from over there and you're so beautiful that I just respond sorry, not interested. Literally happened yesterday in Paris. I'm not that attractive that I expect to be approached by random guys, I'm also not that insecure that I'll fall for their lame speeches either. In Belgium they were worse though. They kept trying to get me to go and get a drink with them. Like thanks but no thanks. I'll just stay in this nice and public place. I don't care that it's only 15 minutes, I'm not following you anywhere. I prefer to be paranoid than dead forward slash assaulted.